Hello, welcome to today's Get Ready With Me and Life Update. I am Selena, the Metafictionalist, and I'm going to a lecture tonight. So, um, I'm going to be curling my hair. Just so you know, I'm not a hairdresser. I've probably said it before. I've watched countless tutorials. However, I reserve the right to awkwardly do my hair to the best of my abilities. So if you're watching and you have technique pointers, go ahead and put them in the comments. Otherwise, just know this is a very, um, like an amateur hairdo situation. It's not meant to, uh, to be the ultimate strategy. Right now my hair is really dry. Um, and unruly. Uh, I've also ran out of um, regular heat protector spray. I have some really like oily stuff that I don't like too much um, for curling because then my curls lose their um, volume, <laughs> let's say, or they, they, they fall from ringlets into a mess. But anyway, doing my hair, I'm going to a lecture. Let me tell you about the lecture I'm going to. I'm going to a Masonic lecture on Stoicism, which is a Greek philosophy uh, that I'm interested in, that I have read about and taught about um, in the past. Now, uh, you might be thinking, wait a minute, Freemasons, that's uh, a male-only kind of uh, group. And uh, yes, that is true. The Freemasons are a fraternity. They're a brotherhood. Um, and they believe in good things. I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories and uh, misunderstandings about what they believe in, but they are a uh, deist, so to speak. They, there's spiritual belief, regardless of religion. Everyone is welcome, although it is a male order. And they work on personal development. They have different uh, rituals of initiation and so forth. Um, but they value liberty, hard work, self-development. And uh, the lecture, though, said everybody was free to join or is free to join. So hopefully I didn't misunderstand that or else it, it will be me leaving their lecture peacefully and without any bad feelings, of course. But uh, it sounded like it was open to the general public. And since I do enjoy stoicism in general, and I'm in the area, I figure why not go? Um, as some of you might know, I do have some uh, Freemasons in the family, like especially in the past, on my mom's side, um, like my grandfather, great grandfather, so on. Um, you know, but I didn't really grow up with um, men attending meetings, the men of the family. I'd say I was really close to my grandfather when he was alive, and, um, you know, I, I learned the values that go along with it, but um, he didn't go to meetings. He, he initiated up to a certain degree and then had other things to do, like raise a huge family and work. <laughs> um, but he, he liked them and, and maintained contacts with his brothers. Um, and any like brothers you meet because it's really open. It's all about the brotherhood of man. Anyway, um, I'm going through a lot of life changes right now. I, I moved out of my nice historic house. I'm staying with family right now and I'm in the middle of some career changes. And there's a lot of things that have been going on that are difficult, but I, I do believe in being stoic. I believe that a lot of times our emotions can lead us awry, so to speak, um, in that, uh, you know, it's important to value logic, reason, and to, to let that guide us through some of the difficulties of life, rather than completely allowing the emotions to control us and our choices. Um, and in a way, the Stoic philosophy reminds me of Buddhism, but a Western version. The Stoics believed in the pneuma, like a life principle, um, 
and viewed that as an all-pervading godlike essence and they had a strict ethical code and um you know buddhism is complex it can be really easy it can be more complex too there's so much culture so much writing so much teaching um and so much that's about personal growth um and cultivation but they also think that the emotions can definitely lead us into the realm of illusion and that um, it's important for us to stay balanced, um, to do that cultivation in order that we understand um, that a lot of the things that upset us or bother us are temporary and, and thus impermanent, right? So anyway, I like it. I like Buddhism, I like Stoicism, I like lectures, I like philosophy, and I got something to do tonight. Now, those of you watching may be wondering why I'm putting these little alligator clips in my hair, and things are messy, you know? I watch these hair tutorials, and girls, they comb their hair out real nice, and they make these perfect little loops, and they clip them up. That is not how things go with me. Um... Every once in a while I pull it off, but it's a maneuver. It's a maneuver. So I'm a, I'm just kind of clipping these up so that they can dry in the air and hopefully have a little more buoyancy. <laughs> I don't know. I got the idea from, a, I think her name's Cherry Dollface on YouTube. Um, yeah, Cherry Dollface. She has a really good tutorial about vintage pinup curls without the rollers. And that's where I got this idea. I did have some foam rollers, but I think it's because my hair's fine and curly and dry um, that, you know, it would sort of, I might have pieces of hair that would get stuck in the rollers when I was trying to take it out. And even though, even if I kept combing stuff before or while I was putting the rollers in, you know, it was just kind of a mess. It's just how my hair is. It's its own kind of beast. So I like this as an alternative for right now, although I definitely want to experiment, experiment with different kinds of curls later. Um, but yeah, about this lecture, um, it is nearby, and since I'm new to the area, I figure it's a good idea to start making connections with people in the community, um, at least scope out things that would be of interest to me, even if I'm a stranger. <laughs> I, I have thought about joining the Eastern Star Order, which is for women um, who are family of the Masons. Um, and I've looked into kind of like what you would need to supply to join. Um, but I'm undecided if I'm going to join that order or not. Um, they do a lot of charity events. Um, and to me, it's just, you know, it brings back pleasant memories of the past. Because um, it wasn't so much that my grandfather was going to a lot of events, but it's, it's a culture. It's a culture. So um, so that's another reason I, I'm going to meander through this lecture and see if there are any random flyers about visiting the Eastern Star Meeting. Because um, I do have my grandfather's... Masonic um, booklet with his initiation stamps or whatever. Um, I might be phrasing that all wrong. Things are crazy. My life has been crazy. So if you're an expert out there and you're thinking it's not a stamp, it's a, a pen notice or, you know, whatever, what have you, bear with me. It is what it is. Um, anyway, I'm curious out there for those of you ladies watching who are really not, you know, maybe not so much interested in the lecture, but wanted to get ready with me for whatever reason. Um, tell me, do you do your makeup first or your hair first? Because um, there's certain things you should do in order. For example, if you're wearing a corset, you got to put your shoes on first before you do your corset. Otherwise, you're going to bend down with your corset all tied up, laced up, and your abdomen won't be too happy. Um, and then, of course, you want to have your outfit on before you do your hair. That way you're not putting your blouse on over your hair and messing things up. 
But what about makeup? Um, ow, I just burned my face. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if there's an order. I always heard do hair last. I could see why that would be because if you're putting on foundation, you could potentially get foundation in your hair or something. You might need to like work on that hair and, and make sure that, um, you get the makeup out so you don't look funny. But right now. I decided just to get my hair done so the curls would have time to kind of chill out up there and cr and dry. Um, or, or cool, I should say. My hair is already really dry. It's winter and, you know, I put a lot of conditioner, but um, I probably need to do a hot oil treatment at this point. But yeah, what do you do? Do you do makeup first or last? Me, I'm doing curls, and then I'm going to touch up my makeup. I uh, I went out earlier and was doing errands, nothing too fun, you know, getting tires, paying bills, so forth. Um, and I did some basic brown eyeliner. I love Urban Decay's 24-7 eyeliner and whiskey. I, I do think, you know... It, Sometimes, like, when you're sharpening it, it can get crumbly. That's something I don't like, but I really like the color. I've been a fan of this color for years. Um, I do want to experiment with different long-lasting eyeliners to see if there are any other brands that have a similar color payoff that last a long time but perhaps sharpen better. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, but yeah, it's been several hours since I did my eyeliner. I might leave it alone. It looks okay, but I'm, I'm going to put some mascara on for sure so that my eyes look a little more awake. I'm feeling rather tired. Um, I keep joking about how I had a bad case of the Februarys. Now it's March, but I still feel like I have the Februarys. What are the Februarys? It's... Basically, that point of time where you get a little bit run down and tired of winter. I love winter. I love cold. I like rain. I like snow. I like warm clothing and cozy drinks and fires and so forth. But, you know, at a certain point, when it starts getting really cold and you got the heater running and you're under five blankets and you're still cold... And you aren't going out to exercise, let's say. Maybe you're not hiking or socializing as much because of the weather. Um, there's this thing where you might feel kind of down. I call it the Februarys. Yeah, mine is a lingering case of it. But what better reason to get dressed up and go out, I think. Um, yeah. So... Mascara is a must. I'm going to put some highlighter on for sure. I think I already put on a concealer. I wear, I think it's Maybelline Fair 10. Um, ah, see, with me and my hairdos, it's always an adventure and it's a bit chaotic. But it's a whole thing unto itself. So nice of you to come by and hang out with me while I get ready. It's definitely um, something I think I, m I should do more often. I don't do a lot of elaborate hairstyles though. I've been thinking about doing different ones, simple ones. My grandma has been rocking a bandana, different bandanas, or she does different headbands. She's been experimenting with her bangs and, you know, she's just busy doing grandma things, but it's pretty inspirational. So I figure, oh, maybe I should do that. <laughs> anyway, what does one wear to a, a lecture? Um, you know, it's one thing if you're paying for a class and you go every day and you're working and you're going to school and you're tired and you have to go to lecture. I see a lot of people who opt for... Even pajamas at that point are just like what you're wearing every day. But this lecture is a little different. Um, 
I, I'm viewing it as I'm going out. You know, I may not even talk to anybody, but I'm going out. So I am wearing today a vintage style sweater from Anthropology that I thrifted a while back that I really like. I don't usually wear a lot of light colors. I have, I do, but not all the time. Um, it's sort of a creamy kind of beige. Got a little bow. Here, let me see. It's cute. I'm wearing that and some cigarette pants. It is too cold right now. I have sweater tights and like fleece line tights and I like wearing dresses even if it's cold and you know layering but for this one I figure a pair of pants will work if I even get ready on time I'm worried by the time I'm done getting ready that I'm gonna be running late I think I'll be fine but yeah I figured um a little bit of a vintage style because that is my style when I'm not simply in exercise clothes um and I want it to look like I'm dressed to socialize, but not too fancy and not too dressy. Something casual, but not too casual either. I don't want to look like, oh, I just walked off the street. <laughs> um, I've never been to a lecture that they put on. They have a whole series. It's called the Illumination Lecture Series, and they sound really good. I'm catching this one for sure just to see how it goes and if it's amazing then you know I hope to visit again sometime I'm not I'm not entirely sure how it goes or who's coming like I said I could show up and they might say oh no you misunderstood no ladies and as I mentioned before that's fine um, but you know wearing something that's Kind of dressy, but pants makes me feel like I'm ready for anything. I can take a walk. I can sit for a long time. Um, I can go home if I need to, which I don't think I'll need to, but yeah. Oh my goodness. Sometimes I think about those elaborate hairdos that we see in paintings, you know, those Renaissance paintings, classical paintings, even pre-Raphaelite hair. Well, pre-Raphaelite hair a lot of times is just beautifully disarrayed, but um, whenever you see kind of royalty or the Greek goddesses, they often will have a lot of curls and things pinned up. When I do this process, my hair reminds me of that, except that the alligator clips stick out. And so I've wondered about, oh, how can I actually do that sort of thing on the day to day? And I'm not exactly sure. Um, you know, I, I like braids. I've seen a bunch of cool videos on braids, but I'm not so good at those. Um, I think a lot of people have been getting into different braids, you know, where there's the traditional braids, Dutch braids, French braids, fishtail braids, and you might have more than one kind of braid in your hair. At one time, you might put even clips, like ex not extensions, but weaves, so to speak, with different color hair that you can add to your braid with. That's pretty cool. Um, I think I'm on to something. If I could just figure it out, I could go to an event and look like I came off of a Greek statue, but I haven't figured it out yet. See, my hair is crazy. Do you have winter hair survival tips? I need some. I should probably browse YouTube for some. It's just that my hair, it's a very specific hair type. Everybody has very specific hair type. I've got um, high porosity hair, meaning like Pretty sure I have big hair pores. <laughs> so my hair is kind of fine, it's kind of dry, but then if there's moisture in the air, the hair will start coming alive. It absorbs everything. I also have to be careful with protein shampoos and conditioners because everyone says, oh, it's so good for your hair. But a lot of times when I use protein products on my hair, my hair gets crunchy. 
and I don't like it. And I heard that means you actually have too much protein in your hair. I don't know if you heard that. Um, but sounds like a thing. I can see that happening because once something becomes popular, they start putting it in everything. For example, turmeric is supposed to be anti-inflammatory. Well, it is, especially the roots. If you ever get the roots at some kind of natural food store and press it into juice or grate it into a, like a golden milk tea or something, it definitely helps with stuff like arthritis. Um, so yeah, I could see that, but you know, if you have old dried up turmeric and you're just putting it in everything, it sounds good. You could put on your product box has turmeric anti-inflammatory but you don't have to mention when your turmeric was ripped out of the earth <laughs> you know it could be turmeric from five years ago it might not even smell or taste like anything and people will put it in there and anyway I see that protein is in all of the hair products now I looked so hard for some hair products that did not have protein specifically because I've been having that problem with getting crunchy hair and at the time I had a hard time finding anything that didn't have some form of protein. There's wheat protein. I'm allergic to wheat, but wheat protein's in a lot of stuff. Rice, I believe, has protein in it too. You might see, I think like biotin or provitamin formula and it's, it's um, yeah, there's there's all sorts of ways that protein gets put in your hair products. It's supposed to be nice, but it might be counterproductive depending on um, your hair type. Like if you have a big pores in your hair or small pores, it might not matter as much. I'm not sure. Anyway, so now you know why my hair is a living beast with a mind of its own. And why doing my hair can be a complicated matter. Okay, I'm happy this hairdo is coming to fruition. Basically, in a few minutes after I'm done touching up my makeup, I take the alligator clips out and run the brush through it and I'll have some curls, possibly with weird, my ends might go and stick in different directions. That's fine. You know, whatever. <laughs> I tried my best. I probably need a trim, but I want to grow my hair long and um, I've had a lot of weird experiences with hairdressers where I tell them literally I want a trim, I want it blunt do as I say please like and I have them do a lot of other things like oh I, I low-key I gave you um layers anyway or I had one guy who used to I said don't use that the fringy razor thing on my hair it's a technique I, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong but and he did it anyway he's like well you came to me that's my style and um with my hair pores being what they were or are, it didn't work out so well. Anyway, um, this is what I used on my skin earlier. Some Kosas Tinted Face Oil in shade 3. Oh, I love this um, Peach Perfect Too Faced Powder. use it all the time, every day, because I kind of have oily skin. I think I, I tend to be dehydrated, I exercise a lot, and try to drink water, but... Who knows if I'm getting enough? I probably am not. Um, but my face will get a little oily. I like that Kosa's isn't too greasy or anything. It doesn't matter what brand of um, tinted moisturizer I use. I always get a little shiny on the nose after a few hours. Um, I did try Ilya's. I hope I'm saying that right. Ilya's tinted face product. And that one was actually really dry. But it was a little too dry because my skin tends to be dry, but I think I might revisit it closer to summer, see how it goes. Yeah. So I have, um, yes, this is the Maybelline concealer I wear. I just picked up a new one. You're going to see me go off camera here and there. Oh, I know. I'll take the makeup to me. That makes it easier. Yeah, I just picked up a new one. Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in 10 Fair. Um... I probably need more of it under my eyes. I'm not sure. I'm not really going to put more concealer on. I do like putting a little tint on my eyebrows. Some people like have strong opinions where they don't like that because it's not natural. But, you know, 
I don't really care. I like it. So, sometimes when I go out, I like to do it. I don't do it every day, though, because, um, you know, if I'm waking up early for work, I just need to get to work and not spend time on my eyebrows as much. I have a mirror over here that I am working in. So I have this um, brown auburn powder. It's an eyeshadow. I got it from ColourPop a while back. Probably too long ago and I can never find out what the name of it is. I don't even know if they carry it anymore. But MAC carries a similar color. And I keep meaning to go pick up a new one. Because I have a refillable compact, so I know that MAC has refillables, little pans. Yeah, so I just put some tint on my eyebrows. I think it's really pretty. I like when my eyebrows match my hair, but when they don't, I view it as I'm uh, doing a calico cat look. And everybody likes calico cats. Except for people who don't, I guess. But, you know, cat lovers tend to like calicos are cute. But, um, yeah. Whew. Okay. Well, they might not be perfect, but they're good enough. Um, I have Benefit brow tint that I like. It's the Auburn shade 3.5. And I put some on earlier, but... Just gonna retouch that. Gonna need to pick up more of this stuff too. I've tried other brands that I like. I really enjoy Lime Crimes Auburn colored eyebrow substance, but it dries out pretty fast to be honest, which bums me out. Um, I'm using Benefit's 24 hour brow setter. Not because I want my eyebrows set for 24 hours, but occasionally I'll just have a stray brow. So if I put this stuff on, I don't have to worry about it. It's also good for flyaways. I tend to get some frizz, um, but I'm not really messing with it today. <laughs> I'm not trying to look too, too pretty. Oh, it's fine if I am pretty, but this is more just about being socially presentable rather than glamorous or something like that <laughs> from the lady who has a bunch of clips in her hair and weird messy curls <laughs> okay so um the mascara I love this brown mascara from Maybelline I would love even more so kind of a cherry auburn mascara those are my favorites I've seen one online I want to get but I'm trying to raise up some funds to move out somewhere else you know to get a down payment on a used car and it takes a long time to raise money up sometimes I'm applying for a lot of jobs I have a job I love but Sometimes you just need to earn a little more money. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't think that I will be getting my beautiful cherry auburn mascara anytime soon. Thus, I have a Maybelline to the rescue <laughs> brown. Um, okay, so I did that. Um, my eyeliner, well, looks like it I blurred a little bit. I went on a walk. I went on more than one walk. I probably rubbed my face. Who knows? I don't feel like doing a bunch of stuff to my eyes, so I'm just smoothing it out. If it creased, you know, I just kind of rub it out. No one's going to be inspecting my eyelids, really. So I think it'll be fine. Um, but I do want to put some highlighter on. I did not put that on. I have um, Natasha Denona's Love and Cheek Duo. That was out a couple years ago. I really like it. Although, you know, if I currently needed highlighter, I just get it from ColourPop. Not that there's anything wrong with this one, but it was kind of pricey, and I've come to realize that a lot of times less expensive cosmetics do the job. I have some makeup I really like that's a little more pricey. That's fantastic. That 
you can really tell that it's better. But with highlighters, I'm kind of, mm, I think you can get something nice for less. Okay, I just contoured again because I'm always touching my face. So uh, contour is a plus. And now for a little lip going on, I'm keeping it really simple, really basic. You might even hear it in my voice. Like I've had some congestion lately and I probably sound tired, but I don't want anything too elaborate. So what I have, I have some Lime Crime Ghost Veil Lip Primer. I had some lip stuff on earlier, but I ate already, so it probably came off. And um, this makes lipstick, lip balm, lip tint, lip anything last a really long time. Lip balm, I guess, is moisturizing, so it's a little different. But if you like tinted lip balms, it will extend with this lip primer stuff. Um, I'm using Ritual de Fee. Inner Glow Cream Pigment in Frenzy on my lips. See, yeah. Let's do a little tint. Nothing too strenuous to upkeep. I love layering um, a classic red lip with like a darker blood red lip, but that takes a little more work. There's the lip balm. This is just to have something on my lip. I do sometimes get pale lips. I have an overactive immune system, so my um, helpful and valiant immune system, my white blood cells, will make my lips look pale. So I figure might as well get the tint going on. And since it's cold, my, uh, my curls seem to have cooled off, so I'm releasing them from their clasps. We'll see how this turned out. You know, it's so fun getting ready with people. I have some good memories getting ready with some girls before parties. People I've lost touch with. Even people, girls I didn't really know very well when I was traveling, we just get ready. And it was fun. That's where you learn everybody's beauty secrets when you're getting ready with them. You find out that they, everybody has a trick or two up their sleeves, and it's a nice way to share information, product tips, and so on. Wow. I'm going to go out like this. No, just kidding. The um, un unfastening of the hair continues. Okay. Yeah, I have some docks I really like to wear with my vintage outfits. They're just the Doc Mary jeans, but my feet shrink. What? How do your feet shrink? I don't know. My feet have shrunk more than once. I was wearing a size 9 shoe for a really long time. Then for a few years, my feet were at eight and a half, and now I'm a size 8. I think maybe I lost some weight because I started um, hiking a lot. I don't know if your feet can lose weight, but it is what it is. My my docks don't fit anymore. I ordered some. There's these uh, heel insoles you can get or inserts. And if your shoes are just a little too big or if they rub against your Achilles, these inserts will take care of it. I think they're four to six dollars on Amazon. Um, but they haven't arrived. I'm not sh sure what shoes I'm going to wear. Probably not my combat boots. I've been wearing those nonstop, but heels seem too dressy. I guess I'm just going to figure it out as I go. But yeah, so I took the curls down and I sort of brushed them out and my hair basically looks the same as it did, but hopefully a little bit nicer. There's a, a better way to do that. When you do that technique, you can use... There's like a certain kind of fluid you could put on your curls. Not only heat protectant, but you could use um, maybe like a setting lotion and, and you do your curls and then you pinwheel them up and have that setting serum or whatever it is and it looks nice. But um, I think this works. Like crazy curls are really um, quite me. So it's like, it's real. It's honest. 
I, I value beauty, but I'm in a hurry and shit's crazy, so it is, like I said, what it is. Okay, thanks for getting ready with me. I'll uh, probably post some pictures on Instagram, hopefully, if I remember, if I don't run out of batteries on the camera. Um, maybe I'll give a quick review of the lecture, maybe not, not sure. But I'm glad that we could hang out for a little while. Till next time.